morning everybody it's uh, Mark from MT Restorations again got another little project thought maybe some folks might be interested I uh, recently acquired a couple of these Lionel lines the old 3927 track cleaning car uh, never really had one before so I thought it was time to get one so I got this one uh, about a month ago took it all apart it was really a growler um, they don't move on their own they have to be pulled around the track by another means either an engine loco whatever but um, what it does when you flick the lever over this spins around and scrubs the track and in the back as you can see you get these little cotton swabs whatever you want to call it and you put a clean one in you can probably put a little chemical a little alcohol whatever and it's spring loaded um, and it kind of holds its place on the track with these little guide wheels which is kind of cool and this obviously picks up dirt and grease as you can see I dragged it around the track a little bit um, so that seemed to work pretty well, but I don't have any of these sponges. I did order some from my parts uh, guy up in New York. Hope to get those in the next couple days and we'll try that out. But it cleaned up really well. It was filthy. It, it growled when you put the motor on. Um, and so I just said I got to be able to fix that. Get rid of that noise. So I did. It, it worked pretty well. I got another one the other day in the mail. I was a little disappointed. Um, the fellow who shipped it did not put it in a box. He put it in an envelope, wrapped it in a big ball of cardboard or paper, and it did not make the trip. As you can see, this little vent got crushed. You can see it's a fresh break. Um, I'm hoping I can salvage it, clean off the grease, and get a little super glue in there to keep it back together. But um, let's see if we can get this off. Uh, the, the screw is pretty rusty, but I think we can get it off. Yeah, here it goes. It's got a little catch on the back, which is cool. It fits into a groove under there, and the screw holds it up, so we're pretty good shape. Like I said, I need to fix that vent, but I'll have to clean this all up, get the grease and everything off of it. As you can see, this one's pretty dirty. Um, it's got a lot of a lot of dirt, dirt, grease built up in there. So what we're going to do is take this apart. Because I put it on a track, it doesn't do anything at all. Um, you know, it just uh, does not even growl. I'd even be happy if it growled a little bit, but it doesn't. So we're going to see why not why it's not working so take the screws out of the plate and let's see if we can get inside there and see what the problem is get this lifted up out of there okay the brushes are there that's a good sign i don't see any loose wire everything seems to be in order but brush there okay so as you can see down in here there's some gears and so on and so forth and to get to them these two studs actually um, screw off they will come off with a little hex headed uh, wrench I got a little nut driver type of thing you unscrew these little posts these little pegs that the screws go down into and this should take this mechanism right off of here so we'll just clean all that up so on and so forth and take all these gears up out of there see if we can 
get this stuff cleaned up a little bit. So put them in order. That way you can keep track of where they where they come from. Let's see if we can get this one up out of here. They just lift right off. You can see it's a compound gear. It's got one that drives this. Put that there. Take that out. Put that there. As you can see, there's a lot of gunk in there. Let's see if we can clean some of that out as well. Get a few Q-tips ready to go here. I got my uh, can of degreaser. I use a product called CRC. Uh, I like it. It's electric. It's an electric motive type of uh, parts cleaner. I get that sprayed in here and here and there and uh, that gets uh, all that stuff off of there. But first, let's see what we can scrape out. Get some of that nasty up out of there. It's starting to harden up on me. So, what we'll do is get all that right out of there right now. All right. Get my little exacto knife in there. It's a good digging tool. Scrapes pretty good. Get all that stuff out. Loosen it all up. All right. So what I'm gonna do with this dangling here? Let's see. What I'm gonna. I think that's the easiest thing to do. I'm gonna take this wire and snip it off. So if you're gonna do this, there's not a lot, a lot of wiring to this, but this is obviously from the contactors. Just remember where it comes from. Feed it through that little hole, which is on the tip of the magnetic field coil. And uh, that way we can, I'm gonna take the degreaser and right over my trusty wastebasket Give me a moment. I'm going to spray some of this stuff out of here. Loosen all that up. And then I have a I have a toothbrush that I use to clean some of that stuff out of there. Just I got to keep it to myself. My wife doesn't know I got her toothbrush out there. But I'll clean it up and put it back before she notices. But anyway, let's see here how we make it out here. Once we squirt some of that in there and toothbrush out this loose stuff, you can see I'm getting down in there and getting some all that out of there. So I'm gonna, while it's sitting in there, I'm gonna wave this around a little bit. I'm gonna give it another squirt just to rinse. Don't waste a lot of it. Um, and be careful, this shoots out pretty, pretty quickly. So we don't want to, uh, you don't want to squirt it back and get it in your face and in your mouth. It doesn't taste very good and it burns the eyes. So wear eye protection. I have eye protection on 24-7 uh, because I can't see. But get in there and wipe out as much of this stuff as you can with a rag or whatever paper towel. Get that in there and get all that old stuff out and maybe clean it back up. Excuse my arm all the time going through the camera. But yeah, get a Q-tip down in here and get the rest of that stuff. Get all the little nooks and crannies out of there and get all that out of there. Don't have to be spotless where you can eat off of it, but... We want to get all the older stuff out of there. We are going to put some grease back in there, so it's not like it's going to remain clean. And we might as well clean everywhere we can reach. I like a clean vehicle here. Okay. So, we pretty much have pretty clean base now next we're gonna clean up the uh, get down in here get some more of that out of there okay let's see how much of this is uh, just a 
little residue left in there. Get out of the corners here pretty good. Give it a little shot of air. There we go. So, big difference. Looks a whole lot better. Um, I'm going to do the same thing to this, kind of rinse it off a little bit, get that dirt and dust off. First, I'm going to blow it off a little bit, hold on to it for it doesn't blow away. Yeah, it got a little bit off, but I'm going to have to shoot it with a little degreaser. Uh, let's see what the armature looks like. It needs uh, cleaned up real well. Obviously, each gear is in bad shape, so we're going to clean the same, same process. I'd show you on film on how this is going, but it's uh, kind of messy. So I'm just going to shoot it right over my waste basket here and uh, use my brush, clean up these gears here a little bit real quick. You know, this nylon gear, you got to be careful of them, you know. Um, don't know if they're available anymore. Some of the parts are actually. I just ordered uh, the parts for this one over here. Um, it, it comes with a couple tanks on the top it sits in the in those little those little grooved areas there's uh, two tanks that have a little bit of words some text written on them I forget what they say but they're uh, uh, they're not with cleaning fluid in them they're just hollow tanks but uh, I got a couple tanks coming for this one and then the sponge, I, I ordered some more of these little um, cotton swabs. And uh, then this one, will, uh, down inside that hole, goes the liquid for the cleaning fluid because it'll absorb on that sponge. And as it goes around, it's supposed to clean the track. So I've not tried one of these before in all the years I've been messing with the trains. But uh, we're going to find out how good these work. So I'm going to get up in here a little bit, get some of that stuff, shoot a little juice down in there. Pull off a little bit of that bad cotton there, get down in there, see if we can get that stuff out of there. Yeah, clean this out as good as we can. That's pretty good. Okay, so that goes in there. Oh, wrong way. Okay, so that goes in there. Since it does spin around, there's no reason why we can't put a little grease on here. And my trusty new tube of old grease, old lube, it's a new old tube of lube I got recently at a parts store um, you find these on occasion and this one's pretty full and it's still got good grease in it see that look at that the Lionel lube the original lube you can't go wrong with that put that down in there and oh yeah it glides like brand new the next gear up oh, oh look at that one that's pretty nasty See if we can get off of here. Ooh. Yeah, it don't even look good, but it'll clean up here in a second. I'm gonna take that hard stuff off of there. I'm gonna give it a shot with some lube or some cleaner rather. Get that going. Get my little toothbrush going. Get that clean as we can. This stuff works really well. I, yeah, I really like this stuff. I get it at Ace Hardware. Um, it's, 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 it's expensive, but the cans last a while. It's not like I go through a lot of it. I, I don't. It doesn't need a lot to clean these up. So, get that going here and clean that up the best we can and wipe it off with my my towel, my holiday towel. You can see my Santa on here. My Santa towel, it's, you know, it is is getting to be the holiday season, so I got my Santa towel out. And uh, pretty soon, I think there's only like 50 days left or 45 days left until, until Christmas. 
So get my wire brush and kind of get into some of these teeth of the gear. Clean that up pretty good. There's still some gook in there. So I have a little dental tool. There's not that many teeth on here, so I'm going to clean each one individually. You can see what I'm pulling off of there. get little pieces of metal from from the gears grinding all kinds of stuff falls down in here so again I'm gonna shoot it with a little bit of air get the other little particles off what's left yeah it's pretty clean it's pretty good shape not too bad let's see where we are yeah it's getting better okay so what I'm gonna do is again put a little bit of grease on this pin that it rides on a little bit underneath here and there just enough to keep it moving we don't even know if this is the problem yet you can see now there just, you can see when it's seated down in there all the way well, these glide really nice. Okay, so last one. Same thing. We're going to give it a little shot of cleaner. Take the brush. Didn't, oh, almost lost it. I did that a couple times. And it always seems to happen when my garbage can is full. So when I lose it, and of course it falls to the bottom. I gotta take all that crap out of my garbage can and try to find a thing. So we got it fixed up here a little bit. Use my Santa towel. Clean this off. Oh, it's looking like brand new. I'm kind of happy with that. Yeah, the teeth will look nice and clean. Okay, good. So we're gonna put a little, little lube on this guy here and there. Just a couple dabs here and there, get a little bit of, get that placed back on there. There. Yeah, that's pretty good shape. Now the armature gear, it's another little gear on here, the pinion. What that will do is sit in here, and as this spins, obviously it's gonna drive all these gears. I think you can see that pretty well now. So, with all that said, and that's all the movement the car has. Again, the wheels are free to, to travel, and um, it won't come on until you move the handle over. Then that starts the motor, which spins the pad, and uh, it's, it's a pretty simple process. So, to clean these, what I've been using is a pencil eraser. Seems to do pretty good for me. You know, it's not perfect, but it gets a lot of that off of there. It's almost, I use this years and years and years. When I was a kid, I used to use a pencil to clean my pennies. And I figure same principle here. This is a copper commutator. I guess it would clean um, just like it would clean up my pennies. So try that. It's, it's less evasive than some other things. People use steel wool. You could use a wire wheel on your Dremel tool. Um, there's, there's a bunch of things you can do. So I try to get the most off with this. Then I'll go back over it uh, with a little bit of alcohol on a Q-tip. And I just happen to have a little alcohol right here. My isopropyl alcohol. Let's see if we can get in here and, and get all some more. See how much black stuff is still coming off. And uh, we can get as all we can with this here. Get down in there. It's getting to be squeaky clean. So then what I do is get my exacto knife and clean out these little grooves that catch all the black sooty dust from the brushes as they spin around. So that's pretty good shape. 
they get black pretty fast. And since we're dealing with low voltage, any kind of drop in voltage because of dirt, grease, um, is going to just, you know, affect the operation of whatever it's running. So get them as clean as you can. Um, now on this end, these teeth look pretty clean. There's a little bit of debris here and there. But uh, all in all, that's in good shape there too. So a couple little metal shavings around. Get those off. Again, we're going to put a little grease. Um, I'm going to put that down in here. I'll put a little here. On, put it on the teeth a little bit. That way we can make sure we got a little bit of good stuff going on underneath here. Now these are a little rusty. It's not that it's a big problem because it travels through a magnetic field. I don't believe the magnetic field is going to be affected very much with a little bit of rust, but I like to take my drum on. Just clean them off some. It don't hurt anything to do that. Just be careful not to get into the winding up here and where the solder ball is and grab a wire. The wires are really fine. And we're going to just clean these up a little. me feel better anyway so there so everything seems to be working pretty well as it should be I think a little bit more grease just on here won't hurt just to keep everything rolling around real good all right enough with the grease all right, so as before, make sure we want to clean this off. So I'm going to spray this real quick off camera here again real quick. Believe me, I'm, I am spraying this with my degreaser. I'm going to get all that yuck out of here and make sure that the brush holder is as clean as it can be. Let me get my trusty toothbrush down there. That was really nice of my wife to let me use it. I, I don't think she realizes how nice she was about it. But So we're going to clean all this off real good. Get all that grime out of here. There's a lot of just messy stuff down in here. And uh, there's a little rust too. Uh, again on the field coil or on the uh, magneto. Or not the magneto but the magnetic field um, not that it hurts the uh, the field it will still conduct and make the armature spin but okay enough with that a little more rinse I'm just gonna get the rest of that nasty out of there and let it drip off a little bit all right, so now, let's see here, get my Santa Claus towel, wipe off some more of this stuff here. And it's coming together. You can see how much cleaner it is as you just wipe off this excess. Get my, down in here and get all this out of there, dry that up. Looks pretty close to new. You see the winding really nice and clean. The lever goes back and forth. Clean off the 
insulator board here. Got a little bit of rust on the handle itself. We can get that with the Dremel tool. Yeah, try to get in the nooks and crannies the best you can. Like I said, this little bit of rust on the uh, magnetic field is not going to hurt anything as far as operation-wise, but since we have it all apart, that's the best time to clean it. Now, as far as the where the brushes go, you can see little springs, little arms in there to keep the brushes tight onto the armature as it spins. You get a little bit of down in there. We don't want to mess up those springs and bend them. But we do want it as clean as possible. Now down inside here, um, this is where we oil. So I'm just going to get that down in there and you can see how black that is. Now the top of the armature actually rides inside this hole. And we want to make sure that we get when it's about back together, we get some oil down in there and that'll keep the top of this lubricated. So this kind of goes back like that. There's two little nubs right here, helps you line it up. Now we got to get our wire back through. Remember that. And it's gonna go back and get soldered back on get soldered on here so we'll get that top clean when we put it back together so we'll get that down and we're gonna have to we have enough wire there it looks like so with that said we got this pretty clean 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 where'd the brushes go okay I'm just gonna give this a little swipe these are just carbon carbon brushes you can see that these more than likely are the original ones, I would say, but they, they could be newer, but they last a long time. People say, well, I'm going to fix the car up. I'm going to take it apart and clean it and replace the brushes and so on and so forth. I have probably can count on one hand how many times I had to replace brushes because they were actually worn down to a nub. And that's typically on the motors that were a hundred years old. I worked on a few that were made in the early 1920s and the teens and their brushes or uh, their brushes were wore down to where you really couldn't put them back in. But other than that I've not come across where I had to change brushes very much at all. So before I close this back up I'm gonna do little bit more with my pencil eraser. You can see what it does. See how clean that gets with the pencil eraser. And uh, the cleaner the better. But they do dirty up kind of quickly. So it depends on how much you run this. Now don't forget, you got these posts, got to put back in. And you just want to snug them up. You don't want to put them too, too tight. You don't want to strip them or anything. They just need to be snugged up. There's no torque that needs to be applied here. Now, there's a little notch. I don't know if you can see that on the top of these brushes. But there's a little notch in the top of a brush. That's the end that goes into the hole. The flat part of the brush stays onto the armature. So, we're going to just kind of put that there. We're going to put this here where they go back in. And it's much easier to do this than it is to try to flop them down. So I am going to try to line this up without losing the brushes and without the armature falling out. There. 
Okay, so th that's kind of secured. But before I put the screws in, you can see how filthy that is. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a fresh Q-tip, some alcohol, and I'm gonna give it a good scrub in here. See if I can get this nasty stuff off of here. You can see how much dirt. It's just like dusty, dirty, outside dirt is all over this thing. So, I'm gonna clean it up here as best we can. I mean, it's not that it's visible, but like I said, we got it apart. Let's clean it the best we can. Get the fuzzies off from the Q-tips. Get that better looking good there. Okay, cool. So we can put the screws back in where they belong. up a little bit again they just need to be snug because this is a plastic brush cover they don't need to be too tight the brushes are in and you can see the little slot in the top of the brush is made for the spring to set in and that's what keeps tension pushing down on the spring if you want line them up it's not a hundred percent necessary but that's what those are for and then what we want to also do, get my oiler. We're going to throw some oil down in here, a couple drops. We're going to see if we can get a little motion out of that. All right, let's see here. drop here it's okay that would be enough to try it anyway now before I put it together a hundred percent we got to get this wire back on let me trim it back a hair I'm gonna clean this wire off it's old and crusty and where it's got to be soldered back together is right over here so let me get my soldering gun it's around here someplace where did i put that thing oh there it is all right, all right. I, I cleaned up yesterday which needed it badly. I was embarrassed. I couldn't even spin my chair around without running over something under my chair wheels. I had cars and engines and scattered all over the place. So we are going to, I cleaned up a lot. So now I can work. So we're just going to, oh, let me put a little power to my soldering gun. I'm going to put this wire back and hopefully you're going to find out when I find out that this thing even works. I would think it should. There's not that many moving parts to it, but there she's starting to soften up. There we go. we go okay so with that said let me see what the contactor looks like underneath Ew. it's got I don't know what that is it even looks like black paint almost on it well let's clean it up We can get it to spin. Yeah, it goes a little bit. You get the wheels cleaned off because, like I said before, with low voltage, these are rusty. With low voltage, uh, making contact is difficult. 
Uh, it doesn't take a lot to break your circuit if you're not getting good contact or a good ground. But rusty wheels, rusty dirty wheels is not a good thing. Listen to that, boy. That's really crappy. But that's alright, we're going to take care of that. So, you can see there's a hole in there. You know what that hole's for? Earl. Put a little Earl in here. And get some of that squeaking to go away. Kicks that axle on each end. These are the lubrication points on any train vehicle, car, engine. You want to get the axles where they pass through the frame greased up. This is starting to rust a little bit, but the spring still works. You want to put a little oil on the roller itself because you want that rolling. You don't want it to just stick in one place because it'll wear a flat spot on it. So anyway, until I clean the rest of this with my Dremel, we're going to try and see if we can get some some kind of noise out of here. So see if we can get that to spin. So let me set it on my track real quick. The rest of the car. So we can put it back together. But what I wanted to do, I'm going to clean the body up. And... So what that does, it will turn underneath is where the sponge is going to be. It, it's spinning that area, but it, it, since there's not one there. But it's not growling though, it runs pretty well. So I think we're successful. So what I'm going to do is put together rest of the car. So we can put it back together, but what I wanted to do, I'm going to clean the body up and and I'm going to wash the grease off and wash the oil off and like I said, I want to try to super glue this vent back. You can see how it was crushed in postage. It's a bummer. Um, it's a fragile piece, but it happens. You know, what are you going to do? But uh, so it does work. It's, it it uh, rotates very very well now. Everything runs good. I'm gonna do a little bit more cleaning down in here, but for now, I'm gonna clean this up a little better. And uh, before I put it back together, clean the body off. And uh, when we get the parts and pads in, um, we're gonna put it on the track. We're gonna try it out, and I'll do a video of that uh, when it all comes together. So for now, this is Mark from MT Restorations. Thanks so much for watching. Um, subscribe if you like what you're seeing. And um, if you have any comments or questions or if you want to see something that uh, you want me to work on, that you may have a piece that uh, you've been trying to uh, decide what to do with it for years or and, and don't know how to take it apart or whatever you need on it, let me know. Maybe I can help you out. So, again, um, it is mt.trainrestorations at gmail.com. So, how about that? So, until next time, thank you. See you again.